Welcome to this presentation where we will discuss what respiratory system elastance is, why we should use it, and how to calculate it. Respiratory system elastance, also abbreviated as ERS, is the pressure needed to inflate the lungs and expand the chest wall, the reciprocal of compliance. ERS is determined by the volume of the lung and the number of lung units available for ventilation. When lung volume is approximately normal, elastance is low. When there is significant collapse or consolidation of the lung, ERS is increased substantially. Because PEEP can modify lung volume and stretch, ERS is also influenced by the set PEEP. Elastance is important because it modifies the relationship between tidal volume and driving pressure. In other words, ERS determines how much lowering tidal volume leads to a reduction in driving pressure. When ERS is low, lowering tidal volume may not lead to a meaningful decrease in driving pressure. On the other hand, when ERS is high, lowering tidal volume may lead to large reductions in driving pressure. Consequently, ERS may determine a patient's risk for ventilator-induced lung injury. For example, at 6 milliliters per kilogram of predicted body weight, individuals with high ERS would have higher driving pressures than those with lower ERS. Therefore, the patients with high ERS may be more likely to sustain ventilator-induced lung injury and may benefit more from lowering tidal volume. This was supported by a recent study by Gallagher et al. 2021 showing that mortality benefit of lowering tidal volume was higher with increasing ERS. To prevent ventilator-induced lung injury and reduce mortality for patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome, the standard of practice has been to achieve lung protective ventilation through lower tidal volumes such as less than 6 milliliters per kilogram of predicted body weight. Recent evidence suggests that the primary target for lung protective ventilation may be the driving pressure, also abbreviated as delta P. According to previous studies, driving pressure was independently associated with mortality for patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome. You can obtain plateau pressure and total PEEP measurements to calculate driving pressure by performing inspiratory and expiratory occlusion maneuvers on the ventilator. When you perform an inspiratory occlusion maneuver, you can get your plateau pressure, while performing an expiratory occlusion maneuver will measure the total PEEP. It's important to ensure that there is a straight line on the pressure time waveform with no interruptions from patient efforts during these maneuvers. You can then calculate driving pressure by taking the difference of plateau pressure minus the total PEEP. Now, most ventilators will allow you to perform these maneuvers during assisted and controlled ventilation modes, with the exception of the Periton Bennett ventilators by Medtronic, which only permits these maneuvers during controlled modes. This video shows how to perform inspiratory and expiratory occlusion maneuvers on the G5 to get plateau pressure and total PEEP. To measure plateau pressure, go to Tools and then press Inspiratory Hold. Wait 3 seconds and look for a straight line on the pressure time waveform. Hit Inspiratory Hold to stop the maneuver. Use the knob to scroll over to the flat line on the pressure time waveform to determine your plateau pressure and tidal volume during this maneuver, as you will need these values to calculate ERS. To measure total PEEP, go to Tools and press expiratory hold. Wait 3 seconds and look for a straight line on the pressure time waveform. Hit expiratory hold to stop the maneuver. Use the knob to scroll over to the flat line on the pressure time waveform to determine your total PEEP. Unfreeze the screen when you're done reviewing the waveform. Using the measurements obtained from this example, you can calculate driving pressure by using the following equation. Delta P equals to plateau pressure minus total PEEP. In this example, it equals to 26 centimeters of water minus 5 centimeters of water, which gives you a total driving pressure of 21 centimeters of water. The following is an example of how to calculate ERS using the measure values from the previous video. 
ERS equals to delta P divided by the tidal volume at plateau pressure divided by the predicted body weight. When expanded, this equals to plateau pressure minus total PEEP divided by tidal volume at plateau pressure divided by the predicted body weight. In this example, it equals to 21 centimeters of water divided by 6 milliliters per kilogram, which gives you an ERS of 3.5 centimeters of water per milliliter per kilogram. Studies are ongoing to determine clinical recommendations for specific driving pressure and ERS values, but based on existing study results, the following values are suggested. For driving pressure, it should be less than 15 centimeters of water. In terms of ERS ranges, normal elastin should be less than or equal to 1 centimeter of water per milliliter per kilogram. Intermediate elastin should be equal to 1 to 2.5 centimeters of water per milliliter per kilogram. High elastin should be greater than 2.5 centimeters of water per milliliter per kilogram. Please note that a threshold of 2.5 centimeters of water was used because at 6 milliliters per kilogram, an ERS of 2.5 centimeters of water will result in a driving pressure of 15 centimeters of water. A study by Chen et al. from 2018 suggests that there may be instances where patients have an airway opening pressure greater than the total PEEP. Driving pressure is calculated during these scenarios by looking at the difference between plateau pressure and airway opening pressure. You can learn more about how to perform airway opening pressure by visiting rtmaven.com forward slash ri hyphen ratio. Now, assuming airway opening pressure is greater than the total PEEP for the video example, ERS will be calculated as follows. ERS equals to plateau pressure minus airway opening pressure divided by the tidal volume at plateau pressure divided by the predicted body weight. In this example, it would equal to 26 centimeters of water minus 10 centimeters of water divided by 6 milliliters per kilogram. It would give you an ERS of 2.7 centimeters of water per milliliter per kilogram. In summary, respiratory system elastins, also abbreviated as ERS, is the pressure needed to inflate the lungs and expand the chest wall. ERS is important because it modifies the relationship between tidal volume and driving pressure. You can calculate ERS by obtaining plateau pressure, total PEEP, and tidal volume at plateau pressure measurements on the ventilator and inputting the values into the following equation. ERS equals to delta P divided by tidal volume at plateau pressure divided by the predicted body weight. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.